Sudan's army has agreed to extend a truce for another 72 hours in the country's civil war. The deal was mediated by the US and Saudi Arabia starting from 8am Australian Eastern Standard Time today. A number of Australians stranded in Sudan are starting to arrive home after fleeing the ongoing civil conflict. Just under 160 Australians were known to be in the war-torn country at the start of the week. The Prime Minister did address the conflict as recently as yesterday. We would call upon all sides of the conflict in Sudan uh, to refrain from the violence uh, that is occurring in Sudan. But we're also working with our allies, including the United Kingdom, uh, to make sure uh, that our people uh, in Sudan are looked after. Joining me now is Dr Mark Deng, a post-doctoral research fellow at the University of Melbourne. For more on this, thanks for your time. Just charting where this has come from, effectively we're seeing the mil military and the paramilitary try to contest for, for power. And was this almost set up by the previous dictator? Because we saw effectively with um, Omar al-Bashir that he wanted some contest, if you like, between these two security forces. Maybe it would have helped avoid a coup. So has that, is that the sort of, um, if you want, the best background and context for what's happening in terms of this power struggle? Well, thanks for having me, Tom. Um, uh, the, the, what is happening in, in, in Sudan is, is very complex. As you know, Sudan was ruled by a dictator for three decades, and that dictator is uh, Omar Bashir, who was removed from power in 2019. And so what happened was there was a transitional government that was uh, formed, and that government was made up of military elements and civilian elements. And so the government was supposed to go for elections in 2021. But uh, in 2021, the military leaders within the government, they staged a coup and dissolved the government and then uh, formed a military government. And they promised that they will go for elections in 2023. Mm. Uh, now, as with any transition from military rule to democracy, there are requirements that have to be met before elections could be conducted. And one requirement is integrating uh, the two militaries, the, the Sudanese armed forces led by General Buran and the paramilitary unit led by General Dagalo. So the two military leaders were working on integrating their forces together. But uh, according to reports, they, they disagree on who should be the leader of the military. So that mm. led to tensions and ultimately to uh, confrontations on uh, 15 April 2023. Now, the question right. you, you've asked whether President Bashir is behind this, uh, is, is, is the answer is, is that it's likely. I haven't seen any reports about him being involved in this, uh, uh, you know, crisis that is happening in Sudan. But I think right. it's likely yeah. that he's probably behind uh, this, this crisis. Um, uh, the, yeah, um, and I guess, sorry to jump the, in, and I guess the issue is, you know, what was what was set up behind him as well that was that was always sitting there, these sort of loyalties. So, as you describe it there, the transition to, uh, you know, at, at any stage for any country from that dictatorship to democracy is always a difficult one, but essentially that's what's broken away here, conflicting agendas, agendas from the, 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 the military and the paramilitary and that that's been laid bare now. What hope that this gets resolved in some way, do you think? Well, I hope the two leaders um, recognise the uh, importance of re restoring peace and stability to the country, because that is right now what is in the interest of the people of, of, of Sudan. And I think that's what needs to be stressed. I, I've seen foreign governments talking about this, but I, I, do, I, I do think that those foreign governments that are close to these two leaders need to use their uh, rapport to, to, to get these two leaders to, to compromise for peace for the country. Um, mm. I, I fear that if this crisis is allowed to drag on, um, I, I think what, what 
happen in Yemen could happen in, 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 in Sudan, because there are various foreign governments with, with their own interests in Sudan that may support either side uh, to the country. Right. So yeah. I, I, I yeah, fear that, that ramps something— ramps up and it uh, becomes a, an arms war of some sort, and that's the, pro the, 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 the fear, isn't it, that a, a people finally coming out yeah, of a dictatorship— exactly then get scuttled and they think they can sort of finally get on with, you know, a chance of democracy and all the, the positivity it can bring and this, this is the alternative. Yes. Well, what, what, what I stress and, and what I think the, the, the two leaders need, need to recognise and also the foreign government need, need, need to uh, emphasise strongly is that they need to compromise because Mm. They, they can fight each other as long as they want, but in, in, in the end, I think they will come back to a negotiating table to negotiate a peace for, uh, for the country. Uh, you know, okay. Sudan has been through periods of civil wars. And, and, for example, you know, South Sudan fought Sudan for 20 years, but in the end, the warring parties came back to negotiate a peace agreement that led to the secession of South Sudan from Sudan. So. War can never be won. And, and I think that's mm. something that these warring parties and their partners need to uh, recognize, that what, what, what okay. will work is, is a, a negotiated peace agreement that, that, that can bring a country back to uh, you know, political stability and peace uh, that is needed in the country right now. Dr. Mark Deng, really appreciate your time today. Thank you.